Hello, my name is Dr. Ismail Badran, and I am a, an assistant professor of physical chemistry at Qatar University. This is uh, chapter 5 gases on uh, general chemistry 101. We'll come to the lecture. So in this chapter, we will talk about uh, the properties of gases. So first of all, we're going to talk about uh, substances that exist as gases. We'll speak about the pressure of the gas and its units. We'll also move on to the gas laws and the ideal gas equation. We will also practice solving problems related to gases. So as you might know that most of the atmosphere is, our atmosphere is composed of nitrogen, which is around 78%. We have also 21% of oxygen. And we have other gases like CO2 and some other gases as well. So that's the importance of studying this chapter, which also introduced the subject of atmospheric chemistry. Here is the periodic table, and as you see here, not all uh, elements they exist as gases. Some of them are, like the first halogens, the fluorine and the chlorine. We have, also, we have also the noble gases, the argon and the carbon, and all of these, and have also oxygen and nitrogen. Uh, just to mention here that this doesn't mean that other elements cannot exist as gases. For example, um, bromine does exist as liquid at room temperature, but when you heat bromine, uh, it should uh, it can convert into gas at one point. Uh, theoretically, all elements and all materials can gasify at higher temperatures. We have also some molecules or some compounds that they exist as gases. For example, methane, which is natural gas, uh, which is the state of Qatar is actually rich in natural gas. And this is uh, the importance of studying this chapter and understanding the behavior of gases. So, as I said, uh, molecules or elements, they actually can gasify, I mean, convert into gases by heating. By heating, and this will be overcome the intermolecular forces between them and convert them into gases. So, what makes a substance behave as a gas? First, it's the intermolecular forces, and we're going to come over this on chapter 11. The physical characteristics of gases, as you might know, first of all, the gas can take up the volume of the container. So if you have any container and you fill it with the gas, the shape of the gas will take the shape of the container. That, will, that, that, that property is shared with liquids. If you fill a container with liquids, the liquid will take the shape of the container, but solids usually do not. Second, gases are compressible. That means they are easy to be compressed. If you apply pressure on the gas, its volume will decrease. That's what compression means. Also, the gas will mix evenly and completely when you put it in a container. That means you have a homogeneous mixture of the gas across the container. Also, gases are characteristics characterized by their lower densities. They have much lower densities than liquids and solids. What is the difference between gas and a vapor? Are they the same? Well, for people, the, the two words might be might be the same thing. But a gas is a substance that is normally in a gaseous state at ordinary temperatures and pressures. So when we speak about oxygen gas or hydrogen gas, they exist at as gases at ordinary, or we use the word ambient. Ambient temperatures and pressure, that means uh, room temperature and an an atmosphere. But for the vapor, the vapor is the gaseous form of any liquid or solid at normal temperatures and pressures. So for water, for example, water evaporates at room temperature, going into water vapor. There is no need for all water to boil to form vapor. There is water vapor at room temperature. And that's what, why we need to differentiate between the word gas and a vapor. So, for example, at room temperature, which is 25 Celsius and one atmosphere pressure, we speak of water vapor and oxygen gas. This is how we differentiate between the two. Now let us move to the definition of pressure and the units of pressure. 
So in physics, as you know, the pressure is the force over area. Now, we are going to uh, define uh, more uh, the nature of pressure of a gas, but uh, the pressure of the gas is actually a cause of the particles collisions with the walls of the container, and I will explain this in a few minutes. But first of all, uh, how what are the units of pressure, and how get the gas pressure is measured? First of all, uh, we define the atmospheric pressure. Because the air surrounding Earth is forcing the molecules on the Earth's surface, that's, that's the nature of the uh, air pressure. So atmosphere is the envelope of gases surrounding Earth on another planet. The force experienced by any area exposed to Earth's atmosphere is equal to the weight of the column of air above it. And the actual value of the atmospheric pressure depends on the location, temperature, and weather, weather conditions. If you, so if you take the column of air at any point on Earth, that will, for, that will exert some force on a specific area on the Earth surface. That's what the pressure causes. But the pressure actually on any spot on Earth is not equal. So not all the pressures on the, on the area on different places on Earth is equal. So that will actually depend on the temperature of that point, also its location, and the weather conditions. And that's why we have what we call a low pressure system and a high pressure system, which causes uh, phenomena like rain and uh, storms. So, as I said, at any point on Earth, if you're, taking, if you're starting, for example, with the coast at sea level, we define the pressure to be one atmosphere. So one ATM is that the pressure of one column of air at the sea level. If you move away from the sea level, we're expecting this column to be lower because as you go up on the surface, as you go up into the mountains or to the, uh, to the hills, that column of air will be lower because you are on high in the sky. And therefore, the, the atmospheric pressure will decrease actually and you might feel a 0 0.9 or 0 0.6 and so on uh, atmospheric pressure now the question is do we have atmospheric pressure lower than one atmosphere at any point on earth yes we have take for example the dead sea which exists between the area and the area between the countries of jordan and palestine the dead sea actually exists under the sea level so in that case, the atmospheric pressure will be higher, and you're expecting an atmospheric pressure around 800 torr or 1.1 atmosphere in that area. It's very high pressure, and you can feel it as you travel to that area. There are also some other places on Earth that exist uh, under the sea level. So as, as we mentioned before, the pressure is force over area, and the force in physics is uh, for F is equal ma, so that's from uh, Newton's second law. So uh, m is the mass and a is the acceleration, and we define the units of force is the the Pascal. Uh, sorry, the Newton. Uh, the units of force is a Newton, and the units of area is meter square. So you divide the, by this by this. The units of force divided by the units of area. You define the units of pressure, which is a Pascal. So one Pascal is one in Newton divided by one meter square. One Pascal again is one in Newton divided by one meter square, which is the SI unit for pressure. So again, the SI unit for pressure is uh, one in Newton over one meter square, which is one Pascal, PA. The fact of the matter is, Pascal is not practical to be used in daily life. So it's a very small unit, and therefore, we define a unit which is one bar, which is equal to 100,000 Pascals. So it's 1 times 10 to the power 5 Pascals. One bar is 100,000 Pascals. We also have the unit of one atmosphere, which is 760 millimeter mercury, which is the same as 760 torr, and one atmosphere is... Uh, 101, 325 Pascal. So these are the uh, different units of pressure. 
We also use the unit of PSI, which is uh, pounds per square inch. That's in the United States. It's widely used. But in this course, we are not into uh, the PSI, which we'll is focused on these units. So here I just want to uh, emphasize the fact, emphasize the fact that is that one atmosphere is actually equal to 760 millimeter mercury, all equal to 760 torr. So one millimeter mercury is equal to one torr. So the words torr and millimeter mercury is the same. So one millimeter mercury, one torr. It's like when you say one milliliter or one centimeter cube, there is the same thing. So one millimeter mercury or Hg is equal to one torr. Where does torr come from? Torr is from the word torr shelby, who is an Italian scientist who discovered the, word, the, the concept of barometer. So in a barometer, what torr shelby did, he brought um, a container and he brought also a, a U-tube that is closed and open from one end that's open from the other end, and he filled that tube with mercury. Somehow he uh, withdrew the air from this area. So this area here, the white area, there is vacuum. There is nothing here. So uh, when he flipped this upside down, the atmospheric pressure applied pressure on the surfaces of, of the mercury in this area here, pushed the mercury up, of course. So and when he did this experiment at the sea level, he measured the height of the mercury column and he found it to be 76 centimeters. When you do this experiment at any point on Earth, at the sea level, next to the sea level, pretty much you will find the same number, 76 centimeters. So this number uh, repeats itself. 70, 76 centimeter is 760 millimeter. And this is where the 760 millimeter Hg came from, which is 760 millimeter mercury. And that's a barometer, and that's a concept of a barometer, a barometer, and this is how it works. Now, if you bring this barometer at the top of the mountain, the column of mercury, of course, will be lower, and you're expecting this pressure to be lower than this number. Uh, one question might rise here is that, what about if we replace the mercury in the barometer by any other liquid like water? If you do that, the reason Tiruchelli used mercury is that because of its high density, he does not want to, this column to be higher. But because of the density of the water is actually much less than the density of mercury, density of water is 1, density of mercury is around 13 or something. So density of water is much less than the mercury. You're expecting this column to be actually much higher. And you can calculate, actually, the column, this, the height of this column. It will be around 10, 10, 10 meters if you do the math. You want to do a proportion between the densities of water and mercury and the 76 number, and you get the answer to be around 10 meters. That's why uh, Torshelli did not use water, he used, uh, he used mercury in them. Let us move on to this question here, which is uh, example 5.1 from the textbook. The pressure outside a jet plane flying at a high altitude fails considerably below standard atmospheric pressure. So that makes sense because, as we said, as you fly up in the air, the pressure decreases. Therefore, the air inside the cabin must be pressurized to protect the passengers. So what is the pressure in atmosphere? So pressure in atmosphere is what is required. In the cabin, if the barometer reading is 688 millimeter, so I'm giving, I've been given 6866, six, 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 sorry, 688 millimeter mercury. It looks like this is a conversion problem. So we proceed with the unit analysis and we say the pressure in atmosphere is equal to what is given to me, which is 688 millimeter mercury times multiplied by the conversion factor. It does make sense to put millimeter mercury down, so it cancels out with the 
this one and the atmosphere up. Does one atmosphere equals one millimeter mercury? No, it's not. One atmosphere is 760 millimeter mercury. So in this case, this goes with this, and the answer would be 688 divided by 760 in the units of atmosphere. So that's about 0 0.905 atmosphere. Two things to talk about here. First, you should mention the units in your answer. So atmosphere and check with the with equia, what is the pressure in atmosphere, so we're good. Think about your answer. Does it make sense? I have 688 millimeter mercury. Atmospheric pressure is 760. So I'm expecting an answer lower than lower than one. One atmosphere is 760 millimeter mercury. So 688 should be lower than one, and I'm getting an answer. Uh, lower than uh, one. The other thing, significant figures. The only thing given in this question is the 688. 688 is uh, three significant figures. We're doing multiplication division here, so the answer should be in three significant figures. And actually, it is three significant figures. The second question is Hurricane Sandy. Superstorm Sandy was one of the most destructive hurricanes in the recent years that was in the United States and also some other Caribbean countries. The lowest pressure recorded for Hurricane Sandy was 705 millimeter mercury. What was that in pressure in kilopascal? Allow me to use my whiteboard here. So given. is 705 millimeter mercury. We need the pressure in kilopascal. Again, this is only a conversion. There is no need to use any formulas here or anything. So we need to basically change 705 millimeter mercury into kilopascal. Using unit analysis, we start with what is given to us. 705 millimeter mercury. Pressure is equal times. I'm not thinking about anything that go, can go from a millimeter to kilopascal right away. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to change this into uh, uh, atmosphere first. I have a conversion factor that goes from atmosphere to pascal. And then from the pascal, I can change it to kilopascal. So the plan here is... Is, go, is going from uh, millimeter mercury to atmosphere. I, I know how to change that. And from atmosphere to Pascal, and from Pascal to kilopascal. So getting back here. Uh, so that's as the previous question. We have here uh, 760 millimeter mercury. And we have one atmosphere in the top times I'm going to change that into Pascal. So one atmosphere is 101325 Pascal and then times I need Pascal to be in the bottom, kilopascal in the top, one kilopascal is 1000 Pascals. So as you see here, your know, analysis works really fine for us. Um, the millimeter mercury goes with this one, the pascal goes with the pascal, and the atmosphere goes with the atmosphere. And the answer should be, uh, if you do the math, that should be um, 94 kilopascal in the calculator. Uh, to be honest with you, it's 94.0 because we have here three significant figures and we have three significant figures. Okay, so you can practice this at home with different numbers or from the questions in the book. Manometers are two types. 
Manometer is the device that is used to measure, uh, to measure pressures, and you might see, you might have seen these uh, gauges, or we call them clocks, at the top of uh, gas cylinders. Uh, the one you see in the picture is called a closed tube manometer, and this is used to, uh, to measure pressures below atmospheric pressure. And we also have the open tube barometer. And in this course, we are interested in understanding uh, the open tube barometer. The open, this is a, a, a diagram of um, a, closed tube, a closed tube barometer. Uh, in this diagram, you have a gas, you have a bubble, or you have a container of a gas in yellow. And you have also a mercury column. And you have uh, some area here we have a vacuum. In this area here at the top of the vacuum, it's a closed tube, so everything is closed. So in this case, there is no, even if there is air outside, the air outside is not affecting anything inside. It's like you have a closed container or a gas cylinder in your house, and the pressure inside has nothing to do with the pressure outside because everything is closed here and sealed and tightened. And under these conditions, the pressure of the gas will equal to the pressure of H. So here, the H, it's the height, the, different, the, the height difference between this point and this point is, the, is H. You can measure this in centimeter, convert that into pressure, and that will be the pressure of the gas. One can ask, so one is, how are you relating the pressure with the height? The pressure is pressure and the height, the height. Recall that. The pressure is measured in millimeter, millimeter mercury. So if you can measure this distance between this point and this point, and you find the height to be, let's say, 10 centimeters, that's 100 millimeter of mercury, and you can convert that into atmosphere. So this is actually, the, the edge here is, is a unit of pressure. The story will be different when you have an open tube. In an open tube, you have a gas, you have the, the mercury column, and you do have a, a tube here, but it's open from the right side, right hand side. So there is atmospheric pressure actually pressurizing the mercury surface from the right hand side. So now it's like the gas is competing with the atmospheric pressure. And clearly here, you can tell that the pressure of the gas is higher than the atmospheric pressure because the gas is pushing the mercury down more than what the atmospheric pressure does. And in this case, you have to understand that the pressure of the gas is higher than the, the atmospheric pressure, and therefore the pressure of the gas is equal to the atmospheric pressure plus this H, the pressure of H, and you can do the math. Now, the story will be different, a little bit different, if you draw this again. I'm just going to draw it really quickly here uh, with the mercury column in opposite direction. So this is the mercury column again. So imagine the mercury is filling this area, and you have the gas here, and you have atmospheric pressure here. If you copy and paste this diagram to the right, and you flip the mercury uh, levels. So in the next case, the left-hand side will be lower. Sorry, the left-hand side will be higher than the, the right-hand side. In this case, the, the, the thing will be different. So in this case, the atmospheric pressure will be higher than the gas. And you need to understand, in this case, that the pressure of the gas is lower than the pressure of the air. And in that case, you don't use this formula. You have to subtract pH from the pressure of the gas. And we're going to uh, practice this in, in a few seconds. Let's take a look at this question. First of all, um, you have a similar diagram here and filled with mercury and you have a, you have a vacuum, but you have also um, a stopcock or a valve that opens and closes. Right now, the valve is closed at the top of the vacuum, so that we have vacuum, we have nothing. We have a pressure of the gas and, and mercury as well. And under these conditions, before I do any, we do anything, the pressure of the gas will equal to the pH, as we said before. Now, what will happen to the height edge of the mercury column at the manometer if the stopcock is opened? Given that the atmospheric pressure is 755 millimeter mercury, once I open this stopcock, air will get into the vacuum area, push, push the mercury down, okay, and push the gas. Now we don't. Now uh, the atmospheric pressure is 755 millimeter merc, millimeter hg, so that means it will pressurize the gas uh, to the other side. 
So uh, we don't have the number for the pressure of the gas. The question is asking about the height of the edge. We just say in this case that the edge will decrease. So edge will decrease. That means the right uh, level will go down and the uh, left level will go up. This question is the one I was referring to. Uh, what is the pressure of the sample of a gas trapped in an open air tube mercury manometer shown below if the atmospheric pressure is 736 millimeter mercury and H is 9.2 centimeter? To solve this question, again, you need to understand here, you don't really think about it. You have a gas and you have air, and this is open tube here. So this is open, that means you have air pressurizing on the top of the mercury. Clearly, the pressure of the air or the atmospheric pressure is higher than the pressure of the gas. Before you do look at the answers, you have to, you have to use common sense, and because because the mercury is to the level, to the side of the gas, then in that case the pressure of the air is higher than the pressure of the gas. The pressure of the air is seven three six, and we need. Uh, we is asking about the pressure of the gas, so this number should be lower than 736, so it could be a B or A. So in this case, we say that the pressure of the gas is equal to the pressure of the air minus pH. Why minus? Because pressure of the gas, as we said, is uh, the pressure of the air is higher, so we're expecting a lower pressure of the gas. Now here we have 736 millimeter mercury and 9.2 centimeters. So this has to be changed into millimeter. And 92, 9.2 centimeter is equal to 92 millimeter. So the answer would be uh, 736 minus 92, and you will find the answer to be B. Next, we move to the gas laws. In um, the 18th and 17th century, people and scientists were interested in studying the gas behaviors. The French scientist Boyle and his colleague Charles, uh, they were playing and were experimenting with the, sorry, they were uh, experimenting with gases, and they were understanding uh, how the gases behave. So in order to understand that. I want to move on to uh, this fit.com um, presentation here. If you go to the link that is available on the website, you have, a, you have an empty chamber here. You can start by pumping some air inside that. So the particles start to get in and start colliding with them, themselves and colliding with the walls. Um, remember I said that the pressure of the gas is a cause of the collisions with the walls. Now, these molecules in blue, they actually moving in different directions at different speeds, and they are pumping into each other. They also pump into the walls. So the pressure of the gas is actually defined uh, in terms of the pressure of the walls, because these collisions with themselves, they don't, they are, they don't do nothing. Remember, the pressure is force over area. So uh, it's the, the pressure is actually close of these molecules forcing on a, a specific, on a specific area here in the, in the walls. Now, let me repeat this again. So I just want you watch here to watch the pressure. So if I pump molecules in, the, in this, you will see uh, the pressure is rising. Now, once you pump some molecules here, you can actually, uh, you have a, uh, a chance to fix these. I want you to play with this at home, please, okay? And uh, so let's decrease the volume and see what's going to happen. See, when you decrease the volume, the pressure goes up. And this tells you something, that when the volume decreases, the pressure de increases for the gas and vice versa. If you increase the volume too much, the pressure goes down. So that's the first thing you want to learn here, is that pressure and volume are uh, in inverse proportion. And um, that's at constant temperature, of course. That's at room temperature. The temperature does not change. When you want to study this, you want to fix something constant. You cannot play with the three of them together. You want to fix one and play with the two. Now let's fix the, the volume. 
So let's fix the pressure and see what happened uh, when I increase the temperature of this. That's what Charles did. Charles, he fixed the pressure, he worked under constant pressure, and he started heating the gas. When you heat the gas, it's like a balloon. Oops, it's gonna explode. It's like a balloon, you have a balloon at the house and you are, you are some air in it, and you start heating the balloon, of course, its volume, so I have to repeat that, its volume will increase. So volume and temperature is in direct proportion. As T increases, the volume increases. Let's fix the volume. Increase the temperature. Pressure will increase. Because you're basically providing kinetic energy for these guys to move on quickly and make more forces unless something explodes. Okay, so I'm going to try this at home. Let's go back to our uh, PowerPoint. So this is what Bowles did first. Bowles he were, was experimental, experimental with these uh, U-tubes, and he was measuring the pressure and the volume of the gas, and he came up to this relationship that when the P increases, the V decreases. And in mathematical terms, that's what we call inverse proportion shift. An inverse proportion shift, it's like x, y equals constant. x decreases, y decreases, and therefore uh, x, y is equal to constant, or in, in our terms, p, v is equal to constant. So I want you to keep this in mind. Inverse proportion, you plot y with x, and it does not increase linearly. It's actually, uh, it gives you a curve that is going down. So at low pressure, you have high volume and vice versa. So when you plot p times v, uh, you get this uh, decreasing function. If you want to get a straight line out of this, you might be interested in drawing p versus 1 over v. In that case, you will get a straight line. But Boyle's law is an inverse proportion. That means p is in inverse proportion with 1 over v, or pv is equal to constant. When we move into Charles, Charles he fixed uh, pressure at constant. He fixed the pressure. He did not play with the pressure. He kept the pressure constant, and he was in interested about knowing what happens to the gas if you change the temperature. So, as we know from daily experiments, uh, the gas has some volumes at some temperature. But if you increase the temperature, its volumes in increases, and this is different than Boyle's law. In Charles' law, V and T are in direct relationship. You increase the volume. You increase the temperature, the volume increases. And therefore, V uh, is, in is in direct relationship with T, and that's and therefore V is equal constant times temperature. If you plot that as X or Y, the V and T are in direct relationship. You get straight lines, increasing straight lines, and with a starting point at minus 273.15 Celsius. So um, the volume of the gas is not zero at zero Celsius. Well, actually, uh, the gas has volume, has volume, has some volume. Even if you cool it, you cool it down below zero, it still has some volume. Well, if you keep cooling the gas, the volume shrinks, it keeps decreasing until you get to a theoretical point, which is the Kelvin temperature, the zero Kelvin, which is around minus two, which is exactly to minus two point three point one five, where the volume of zero. But that's only for a perfect gas or ideal gas, as we are gonna talk about uh, soon. Now, so just remember that uh, Charles' law is uh, V uh, and T. Avogadro. Avogadro law, he fixed the pressure and the volume, and he wanted, to, sorry, he fixed the pressure and the, uh, the, and the temperature, and he wanted to know what is the effect of uh, adding number of moles to the volume. So this is exactly like you have a balloon in the house and it has some volume and, we're, and we are working under constant pressure here. And uh, in, in, uh, at the constant pressure in the house when you have a balloon, the pressure inside the balloon is equal to the pressure outside. If you blow some air on, on this, in chemical terms you add some more moles of air inside the balloon, the, of course the volume of the balloon will, in, will increase. So that's Avogadro's law. Avogadro's law, as the number of moles increases, the volume increases. 
So just like Charles Law replacing N with T. Avogadro's law has some uh, important implication uh, later on that we'll get uh, explained in the next uh, in the next slides in the next uh, lecture actually. Now uh, let us summarize uh, these theorems. So for Boyle's law, uh, we said that PV is equal constant. Let's call this constant K, K1. Charles law, as you remember, the V is in proportion direct with T. That means V is equal constant with temperature. Let's call this K2. And for Avogadro, the V is in that relationship with the number of moles. So that's K3N. If you bring these three equations together, it will bring you the PV is equal in RT, famous equation that I want you to know. This PV in RT is equal to the ideal gas law. It's also called equation of state. And in the next chapter, chapter six, we are going to know why we call it the equation of state and what is a state function and what is a non-state function. But just let, remember this for now. PV is in R, equal in RT, it's equal, it's called equation of state or the ideal gas law. So PV is equal N R T. Let's break this down. This is the pressure. We already know what is the pressure and its units and so on. This is the volume. You can measure the volume either in milliliter or liter or any other units. Uh, this is N, which is the number of moles. And this is T. T should be in Kelvin. If you're solving problems for this chapter, the temperature should be in Kelvin. So if you're having 50 Celsius, that's not good. You have to change that into Kelvin. Okay, so that's 50 plus uh, 273.15. And you get answer 300 something. Now what is R? R is called the gas constant. It has a value. It has different values in different units. Uh, one of them is 8.314 Joule Kelvin minus one mole minus one. One, is one other one is 0 0.08 something. We're gonna uh, derive this soon, but it will be provided to you. You don't have to memorize the gas constant. You just need to know the PV is equal in RT. The equation of state is actually a, a nice tool to understand gas behaviors because. Let's again do PV is equal to T. Now watch this. If you are working at constant temperature, and let's say you are dealing with only one mole of a gas, so this term will be constant here. That means PV is equal to constant. And therefore, you get Boyle's law. If you working at constant pressure, that means in this case, and you are and you're changing the volume and temperature, then you will have uh, V is over T is equal N R over P. So that's your concept. This is Charles' law. Or in other words, what I want to tell you here is that as the P increases, the V should decrease. If you want to fix the pressure and you want to change the volume, if the volume increases, the T should increase. And if you want to fix the volume, if you want to fix the volume constant, and you heat up the gas, you increase the temperature, the P should increase. That's actually another law called Lossac law. So this, again, uh, gives you a behavior of gases. Now, there is one more thing that I want to do quickly here, and uh, it's a useful tool for the PVNRT. Let's talk that we have a same gas with one mole of gas, okay? Let's, let's say that we have a gas here at P1, V1, and T1. That means it has some pressure, some volume, and some. And this gas, we change the status of the gas. We change something of it. So this, that is, 
goes to P2, V2, T2. So you can say here that P1 for this point A of the gas is equal N, which is the same. We didn't change the gas. We didn't change the number of moles. R is, does not change T1. And for this one, we have P2, V2 is equal N, R, T2. Now, you can bring this down and you say P1, V1 over T1 is equal to MR. And this one is P2, V2 over T2 is equal also in R. In mathematics, if we have the two rights are equal, then the two right lefts are equal. And this will bring you to a very important and useful relationship, which is P1, V1 over T1 is equal P2, V2 over T2. So if you are working at constant temperature, then T1 is equal to T2, and you are leaving, you are here living with uh, P1 V1 over equals P2 over T2. Let's bring me this to the another slide here. So the mother equation is that P1 V1 P1 V1 over T1, it's equal P2 V2 over T2. Let's take constant temperature, constant pressure, constant volume. Okay. So at constant temperature, the T's are the same, so they cancel, so you have P1 V1 equals P2 V2. If you have a working at a constant pressure, so P1 and P2 are equal, and therefore they cancel out, and you have V1 over T1 is equal V2 over T2. And if you have uh, a volume that is constant, uh, a gas that, that does not change volume, then the V1 and V2 are the same, so they cancel out, and you have P1 over T1 is equal P2 over T2, and T's are here are all in Kelvin. Be careful that the temperature should be all in Kelvin. You don't have to memorize all of these equations. You just need to memorize the PV and RT or the P1 V1 or the mother equation. This is called the they call it the mother okay, equation, okay? So, uh, from this equation, you can solve uh, problems with gases, okay, easily and, and conversely. Uh, uh, you might have a question that, uh, or a problem that everything is changing, nothing is constant. The P is changing, the V is changing, and the T is changing. In that case, you are uh, going to use, of, of course, the mother equation. So, uh, I just want to emphasize here that at the end of this lecture, the, import, uh, the ideal gas law, which is the PV and RT, and where it came from, it's actually uh, the PV and RT, the ideal gas equation, is a, is, a, is a manifestation of the experimental of boils and chops. So it's not only a mathematical equation, it actually uh, explains the behavior of the gas. And R is the gas constant. Uh, and in the next picture, we are going to um, derive the gas constant, and we're going to... Uh, continue with this chapter. Thank you for listening and have a great day.